Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And this is the Ahuna Latour YouTube channel. And we are very happy that you have joined us on our little itty bitty tiny Ecclesia here and we thank you guys very, very much. And we are those people who think the laws, statutes, and commands are good for all generations until the heaven and earth passes away and even then I think it's probably still going to be good because the laws, statutes, and commands are wondrous. They are beautiful things and the world... Pretty much the world has rejected everything. And, um, you know, I can tell you they've rejected everything because, you know, we, we uh, took a couple of adventures out. And I'm we took a couple of adventures over to BitChute. And uh, we have an adventure over in Odyssey. And the people over in BitChute are a little violent. Um, they're like violent, angry people. And um, they, they use a lot of adjectives in their words, things that I would have to go beep, 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 and try to explain to you. They don't, they don't have full sentence structures without putting a whole bunch of uh, swearing in there. And they're like, they absolutely do not like the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. So the Yahoo and the Torah channel, that I actually, um, it, that is the clean streets of a nice, pretty city. Then we have Bossman 8 and it's kind of like the, uh, it's probably like a, the better parts of the Bronx in New, in New York. And then we have BitChute. And it's got to be somewhere between Harlem and some fifth world country. <laughs> and it's just a really hard place to hang out. So we are over there. We are uploading these videos over there into the ghettos. And um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody's cracking up here. I'm just saying it is a rough neighborhood. <clears throat> so we are, you know, we are the people. We don't. We try not to swear. We try not to do things, and you know, we try to keep our comments and things good of that nature, guys. Why do you find that funny? I don't know. Everybody's over here cracking up. I didn't mean that as a like a a, a thing of that nature, but everybody's around the table and they're cracking up. But that's the way it is. So bitch shoot is crazy. Um, if you guys ever, uh, if we ever get kicked off YouTube, I guess that is where you can find us. But I wouldn't go to the ghettos. I would maybe go into uh, the Bronx, maybe go to Odyssey or something of the sort. But you can always find us at Yahoo and the Torah dot net. Y H W H A N D T H E T O R A H dot N E T. Now, while as everybody's composing themselves, I hear one boy that's in a room snickering around. I, I don't even know why this is so funny. But anyway, we are in month six, and month six, we are in day four, which on the Gregorian calendar is the last day of this month, August 31st. And so here we are. Gregorian it is month. Gregorian month, right. And, and so we are, it is the third day of the sixth month, and we are here. Has everyone contained themselves? Nicole, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> No, they are not no, contained. Nobody has contained themselves. All right. So as we are doing this, and uh, I'm glad I did contain myself because if you guys are all yeah, cracking up, I, it would have been over. We had to restart this. All right. So anyway, um, I guess the comedy hour here at uh, Big Daddy Style. So here we go. Um, let's go into today's reading. And today's chapter is probably one of the most important chapters everywhere. Drum roll, please. You did, you did the wrong one. Oh, crikey. Ah, oh, man. I just, I really bummed this out. I get so excited with the drum roll, and, and there it is, so I can't contain myself. There it is. Try again. <laughs> Round two. All right, Eli, it's good. Sorry, guys, if that's real annoying. It's it's, it's kind of exciting here. Sounds kind of annoying. It, is, it does sound kind of annoying here as well. All right, so let's go into this uh, chapters one, two, and three. We had Moshe. How many times has Moshe started in Deuteronomy and said, it's because of you people I will not go to this land. Twice, I think? Yeah, I think three twice. times? Twice, yes. So, so far in Deuteronomy alone, we have, what? I'm not going to say bitter Moshe because he has every single right to be bitter, beyond bitter. And um, I, I, I can't, I, you know, I'm not going to say that Yah's laws were, or judgments were harsh, but this is, um, you know, this is his main man, Moshe. Right, and so something that we should probably all understand is we are not the main man Moshe, and the main man Moshe had issues like this, and Yah was still angry with him from like forty years, years. forty yeah for forty years, Flumber. and so this is hard. This is a hard stuff to understand, and and hard to understand our heart, mind, and soul of our Creator. But he he's all about obedience, right? And that is where we have an entire religion, a Christian religion or every religion that has said that they're, they don't have to keep these laws. And, you know, if I guess that's true. You don't have to keep the laws. You, you need to keep the laws if you want to keep the laws. If you want to be an evil pagan or a Satanist or a bacon lover or something of the sort, then, you know, keep on keeping on. But, you know, your soul is going to, at some certain point, we're not going to make this, you know, from dust we came and dust we will go. 
and we have these important decisions right now that we must keep intact and we have to protect our soul at all costs everything that we do it must be protecting our soul and Eli, let's get going here. Um, perhaps you can stop biting your nails. <laughs> let's continue on. All right, Deuteronomy 4. Again, this is like one of the best chapters everywhere, and you guys will see why. Now, therefore, hearken, O Yashrael, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers gives you. So right out of the gate. We, yeah, we yeah. start with him basically saying, listen up. But, here's, but this, here's the here's what This is what do. the Christians will say. We're not Yashrael. You're not Israel. You're not Moses' people. We're not God's chosen people, right? That's what they will say over and over and over. We guys, please, I'm not trying to be comedy out. That's what they will say. I've heard it so many times, and I'm sorry I make little funny voices with it, but every time that somebody types that stuff up, which I've seen that a thousands of times, right? Well, how they sound. They say, well, yeah, and they're like, Arr, and they're eating their bacon as they do it so yeah i feel like it's commands well let's be like under like fault oh, like listen to the right like listen it's, to it's coming yeah so this is this is it but who is yashrael eli us us how do you know we're yashrael we keep the torah well it, it, how do you know you're not part of moses's people eli what, he, it was, there's one torah for the strangers and the Hebrew. we're now we're like grafted into his yashrael okay all right that's that's valid i'll take that all right let's go into verse two you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may guard the commandments of Yahuwah Eloheikim, which I command you. All right, so is saying you're only keeping the Ten Commandments and getting away with the rest, is that taking away from the Torah? What Absolutely. about what about the Jewish Talmud? We have that's 25 a, adding to it. 25 books that do not line up with the Torah whatsoever in anything that they do. And you know, we had a Jew come on. I was going to do the comment on it, but it was it was crazy cuz he's yelling, he's like going off on us. He goes, "Oh, you think we killed your Nazarene? We never even heard of a Nazarene." He's like, "We are the keepers. We're the guard of the Torah." So I wrote him back and I said, "You know, you better look up abortion clinics right there in Israel, my friend. Uh, they're open till 11.30 p.m. in your country. And if you guys are guarding the Torah, you're not doing a very good job of it. You're doing a terrible job of it because you're killing babies. And that's that's just one example of many. Okay, Nicole, did you get that in the command? Where do I need to put that? This is that? a brand new command. That's what I thought. Do not add or yeah. take away to the command. I love this. Whatever commandment this is, this is like this is this is the one that we need to etch. If we were able to tattoo a commandment on our arms... That is what it would be, right? And every time that somebody's sitting there telling you something, they're like, oh, the laws of God are abolished. We go to church on Sunday, um, have communion like this, uh, pay your tithes right here. You would look on your arm and you would say, mm, I'm sorry, everything you're saying is either having me add to the word or I'm taking away from it. And it is a commandment that we do not do this. It's very important. It's either you follow it wholly or you follow it not at all. You cannot pick and choose there's what no you want to do. Yeah, there's no there's no picking and choosing what's right for you. You don't do that. You don't get to do that with regular law. You don't get to pick. I won't murder, but I can steal. You can't do that. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Yeah, there's there's we got to keep these commands. Very, very important. All right, let's continue. Your eyes have seen what Yahuwah did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, Yahuwah Elohim has destroyed them from among you. But ye did cleave unto Yahuwah Elohim are alive of you this day. Let me reread that because I messed it up. But ye that did cleave unto Yahuwah Elohim are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you commandments and judgments, even as Yahuwah Elohai commanded me, that ye should go do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Okay, so right there, it says that Moshe learned all he learned from Yahuwah, right? Yes. It says, I. he's like, look, I taught you what Yahuwah taught me. I'm yeah. not taking, there's nothing new. It's the laws of Yahuwah, not the laws of Moshe. <laughs> it is the laws of Yahuwah. It's, it's Yah's laws. I mean, do you want to follow God's laws or sit there and say, I don't follow Moses' laws? It's really up to you on this point. Yeah, absolutely. Verse 6 is another, yet another command. Guard, therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now, why would the other nations look to these people and say they're a wise nation? What, what would cause them to say that they're wise? Uh, probably because they're sick, keeping out of trouble. They're like doing the good things. They're in peace. They're not like 
So they're not they're, like offering their kids up to Moloch. They're not sitting there like, you know, uh, st- they have an idol. They're like tripping the blind and throwing them in the ditch. Yeah, or you have like a chunk of wood and you're sitting there, you get on your knees to a chunk of wood and you're like, oh, a uh, piece of wood, help me today or something. You know, that's what they were doing. Okay, seven. Four. So, uh, Nicole, did you get that in there? That needs to that be. That is a sub-commandment of uh, my commands, Deuteronomy right? 4, too, yeah. For what nation is there so great who has Elohim so nigh unto them as Yahuwah Eloheinu is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has commandments and judgments so righteous as all this Torah which I set before you this day? And again, this is a long chapter, but it might be a little longer because these are very much points that we need to discuss. He says it right there. Yaz, is there look at the laws of North America. That's the only thing I can relate to other than South America. But the laws of North America, you can literally get arrested or a ticket for walking across the street at a place where there isn't a crosswalk. If you walk across the street and there's no crosswalk, technically that's called jaywalking. Depending on the mood of the police officer, he could toss you in the clink for walking across the street at the wrong spot. Isn't that crazy? Where is something in the Torah that says you cannot walk across the street or you're going to get tossed in jail? Right? There's no such law. That's like, that's like a hard law. That's like a burden. That, <laughs> yeah, it's like there's where are the commandments that say park your buggy at the at the stop sign, don't run the stop light or something of the sort. There's nothing of the sort, even though they're probably good ideas to have, especially in the world of motor vehicles. You don't have anything in the law, statutes, and commands. It says it's great judgments, right? They're great. And so and they say, oh, there's nothing like the Torah because when you, when you have the Torah, you're not living in confusion. You're not living in, like, not knowing what to do. With them, they all know what they're doing. They all know they have a unified Torah. They know they're not going to be destroying one another. They know they're not going to be stealing from one another. They know they're not going to be killing one another. Where the rest of the nations are all wild. They have no laws. They are lawless people. And that's where you get the word lawless from um, is because they don't. They're just insane people when they don't have a law. They don't have something to govern over them. And there's a lot of insane people that are frying up bacon this morning for breakfast because that is the meat of breakfast for everybody. All right, nine. Only take heed to yourself and guard your soul diligently lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. But teach them your sons and your sons' sons. There's two commands in this one. One yeah. is guard your soul, and then the other is teach your children. Yeah, and teach your sons, and teach mm-hmm. your sons' sons. Well, does that sounds like uh, it's on the cross, right? Does that sound like the laws are on the cross? If we're teaching them to our sons, I just don't see that and as a burden where you have to teach your kids. Hold on, hold on. If I teach it from my sons, and I teach it to you, and you follow that commandment, and you teach your sons, then your sons see. I mean, where's the commandment break, right? You understand, yeah, right? It's your if we it, teach it to our sons, it'd be our and our children sons, that would sons, have to break these commands. Well, not to uh, teach the Torah. Yeah, that's it. And everybody, if you had sons, sons, right? The sons, sons, sons are all going to be teaching everybody their stuff. But guard your soul would be under guard Yahuwah's covenant laws, statutes, and commands, right? And guard your soul. Only take heed to yourself. Guard your soul. Yeah, so, diligently. I feel like it's a different command. Like, guard your soul. How would you... you how would you guard your soul? By... Hearkening to the word of Yahuwah and not adding to or taking away from his Torah, I think. Or is this a new command, anyone? Okay. I feel like it's different. Like it's almost like a thing. Like protect yourself. Like guard your soul. It's the more. It's more than. It like, does say guard your soul. So maybe that is the next command. So the first one is, is don't add to or take away from the, the words of Yahuwah. And then this one is guard your soul. Right. And then we have teach your children's children and children's children. But that guarding your soul would be doing that, right? Um, or do we teach our sons? And, okay, so maybe that I is. Mean, we already, have a command we already had this as teacher children. Do we have a command for teaching our sons? Teacher yeah. children, yeah. So okay. you put that as a sub command and then make a new command. Right, for guard topic. your soul. Okay, so there's two commandments here so far. Guard the uh, Keep uh, the laws, keep commandments for all times. I don't know and, what part of a burden it is to teach t- children about the Torah. I don't know why people would say it's a look, burden. Look, there's it, not a burden in this command. All I can say is at this age that you guys are at, I am very grateful that we got into the Torah because you guys would be rebellious, wild men at this stage if we did not have Torah. You guys would be all sorts into some evil. I don't even know what to be into, but it would be terrible. So anyway, so we got that, Nicole? I think so. Two commands. Um, guard your soul. Yes. And then teach your sons and your sons' sons. So is that three commands? That's three commands so far. Yeah, well, it's two mm-hmm. new ones and one. Okay, one sub-command. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Verse 10. 
Especially this day, especially the day that you stood before Yahuwah Elohekov in Korev, when Yahuwah said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Okay, so there's there's still more command. There's still something here. Uh, right? No, he's just recapping of what he told him. I will make them hear my words, that they may fear me. Uh, yeah, I was just like, because this was the mountain. It's like, he's like, gather all the people together and they will fear me and obey me. So he's just telling, he's basically going well, back it to It reiterates himself. right here that they should they should fear him, that they may learn to fear right. fear Yahuwah. Yeah. Do we have something yeah. to fear Yahuwah? Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, but I'm, yeah. I feel like it's more of a recap than a law because he's like, back in Mount Korab, I told you to gather all my people together and so that they listen to me and fear me. But do we have a command for fear me? I think so. I'll look in just a second. Because that, they may learn to fear me. All the days upon the earth, and they may teach their children. That's a command. Teach your children, right? That goes upon teach your sons, sons, right? So teach your children. And, you know, the Jews don't want their women taught anything, so they are, uh, I don't know, I guess they're superior men or something of the sort, but I don't know. Verse 11. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And Yahuwah spoke unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the ten Devarim. And he wrote them upon two sapphire stones. And Yahoo commanded me at that time to teach you commandments and judgments, that ye might do them in the land, whether ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that Yahoo has spoke unto you in Korev, out of the midst of the fire. Did your guys say similitude? Uh, I don't, manner. I don't see that. Yeah, I think it's manner. Spoke out of you, so similitude, yeah, so the same manner. What do you guys have? It says, ye saw no manner of similitude. You saw no form of any kind the day. Yeah, you, but you saw no form. You only heard a voice. Okay. So I guess that's what similitude is, is no form, but something. All right. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the multitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is in the... In on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish as in the waters beneath the earth, unless you lift up the eyes unto the heavens, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should be driven to worship them and to serve them, which Yahuwah Eloheka has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Okay, so this is some extra stuff that I do we have anything like that we do know that we are not yeah, supposed is, to make a graven image this right here is quoting uh, chapter Exodus 20 we don't right. have anything about fearing either by the way okay so we need to go back up I don't want to miss this um, where was this at uh, hold so I think whatever the next one is it needs to fear Yahuwah that's verse 10 they may learn to fear me we need to learn to fear Yahuwah learn to fear Yahuwah Deuteronomy 4.10 okay so we clear with that one Okay, and so where's the next one here? I don't think we've had one since that. Okay, um, you do, where, you go? where was I at, guys? 19. 17. 17? You just finished 17. Okay, so... No, you finished This, 18. do we have it under the, um, under the commands for graven images? Do we yes. have it that it says, we cannot make yeah, he anything that's male or female or any kind of beast or any kind, anything of all? Right? Do we have we this stuff? We have, uh, don't make a graven image of any likeness, whether in the earth or in the be or in the sky or in the sea. So we need to add this under that. As like a reference to... Yeah, because this it gives us like, somebody, dude, like takes a chunk of wood and makes like a, I don't know, something out of it. You know, then you know you're not supposed to make anything out of it, right? Even a chunk of wood. And it even says that you're not supposed to worship the moon and the stars and the, the, the sun. And that's what it says too in Exodus 23... Okay, so are we adding... We have that one, so I just need to put it down in here. All right, so 16, 17, and 18 go to that one, or and 19. Okay. All right, so we'll be doing this one. 16 through 19. Yep, 16 through 19. Sorry, yeah, Nicole. Sorry. All right, 20. But Yahuwah has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Mitzrayim, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. Furthermore, Yahuwah was angry with me for your sakes, and swore that I should not go over the Yardim, and that I should not go in unto the good land which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you for an inheritance. There's a third time. Moshe, Moshe is just a bit perturbed. But I must die in this land. I must not go over the Yardim. But ye shall go over and possess that good land. 
He, he, you can definitely tell he's a little bitter here. He's probably like growling this at mm. him. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of Yahuwah Elohim, which he cut with you, and make you a graving image or the likeness of anything which Yahuwah Elohim has forbidden you. Okay, so 23 would go under that same um, graven image one. For Yahuwah Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous L. Even a jealous L. So, I mean, that, that right there, I mean, that, that should tell you enough. I mean, if you're a jealous husband, you don't have other dudes sitting there trying to mack on your wife, right? It makes you very, very angry. Same for your, same for your Yah. Don't do it, right? He's, he says he's a jealous L, which, which is, gives us a great understanding of exactly what he is. 25. When you shall beget children and children's children... And ye have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or a likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Yahuwah Elohecha, to provoke him to anger. I call the heavens and the earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish off the land. Whereunto you go over, go over the Yardin to possess it, ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And Yahuwah shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether Yahuwah shall lead you. And here we are, right? We have woken up in the middle of the heathens. Everybody's sitting there eating pork around us, and you know we're like, hey, we shouldn't do this. Everyone's like laughing at us. All right. And there, shall ye, and there ye shall serve Elohim, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Wow, that's cool. Does this tell us right here that Yah may eat? We know he smells, right? Right. And we know he hears. But does this mean that Yah eats physically where he's at? Does Yah have wrong. a kitchen and a chef? I think maybe like the sacrifice, maybe when it gets burned up, kind of gets sent up him smell. Is there a Mrs. Yah? I don't know. Is there a Mrs. Yah? That's a good question. All right. 29. But if from thence you shall seek Yahuwah Eloheka, you shall find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Very important. With a, where do we hear that at? Uh, seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. That's the that's the that's everywhere, right? That is what we are supposed to be doing. And how do you seek somebody with all your heart and with all your soul, Eli? Obedience. Obedience. Yes. Thirty. That's when you, man. Um. I don't know. No, it says he says. I mean, it's He's just basically saying what will happen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but that's what we should be doing. And we'll get to Deuteronomy six anywhere, which is is basically this would go under Deuteronomy six. Um, yes. Okay. When you are in tribulation and all these things are come upon you, even in the latter days, if you turn to Yahuwah Eloheka and shall be obedient unto his voice, and then with parentheses, for Yahuwah Eloheka is a merciful El, he will not forsake you, neither destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before you since the day the Elohim created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other, whether there has been any such thing as this great thing, or has any been heard like it? Did ever people hear the voice of Elohim speaking out of the midst of a fire, as you have heard and live? Or has Elohim essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of other, another nation by temptations, by signs, by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that Yahuwah Elohim did for you and Mitzrayim before your eyes? Um, mine in the NIV is talking about like a mighty one. What? Has any lowercase god ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation? Oh, that could be. Uh, or as God has said to go and take him from a nation. That could be, it could be a translation error. I think that makes more sense, but mine says Elohim with capital as well. So, I mean, it, it would make sense. I mean, number one, there has never been a lowercase right. Elohim that ever delivers people. That's why it was such a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and then at the bottom it says, like, God did for you in Egypt before your eyes with a capital G. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, there, there's, where's where we could say it? You know, people are always like, oh, the King James is the infallible word of God. It can never, ever be wrong. And 66 books is what we got. Okay. Well, there it is right there. Some of these are like, like this. So in the NIV is like it says, has any, has any God? And then this one is Elohim. And that, that could definitely be a translation, an interesting translation weirdness. Okay. I don't know the answer. 35. Unto you it was showed that you might know that Yahuwah, he is Elohim. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made you to hear his voice. 
that he might instruct you. And upon earth he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their seed after you, after them, and brought you out in his sight with his mighty power out of Mitzrayim, to drive out nations from before you greater and mightier than you are, to bring you in, to give you their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know, therefore, this day, and consider it in your heart that Yahuwah, he is Elohim in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. There's none else, folks. You shall guard, therefore, his statutes and his commandments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days upon the earth, which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you forever. Okay, so that needs to go to the Deuteronomy 4, 2, because it's just, it's a, it's a... No, it's the guard your laws, statutes, and commands. I don't know why you're saying 4, 2. Deuteronomy 4, 2? That's yeah, the one I don't to add and take away. This is uh, why I guard the commands. Oh, so we do we have this? You shall guard his statutes. I mean, guarding yes. it means to, you should not add to or take away from it. I mean, that's how I see his guarding. This is why I say it like this, right? If you're not guarding his commands, then you're like, okay, I'll take the Talmud. Okay, that looks good. So, all right, let's, uh, so we have that. Is that a new one? No. No, it just goes under keep my commands. Keep my commands. And so which command, that's the one we already have, that's right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 11. 11, all right, 11 command. All right, so that's adding into it. Okay, please stop biting your nails. We have some bite, nail biters here. All right. Then Moshe severed three cities on this side of the Yardin toward the sun rising, that the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares and hate, hated him not in times past, and that fleeing unto one of these cities he might live, namely Betzer in the wilderness in the, in the plain country of the Revuim and Ramoth and Gilad of the Gadim and Golan in Bashan of the Menashim. And this is the Torah, which Moshe set before the children of Yashrael. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments, which Moshe spoke before the children of Yashrael after they came forth out of Mitzrayim. On this side of the Yardin, in the valley over against Beit Peor, in the land of Sikon, king of the Emerim, who dwelt at Keshbon, whom Moshe and the children of Yashrael smote after they were come forth out of Mitzrayim. And they possessed his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Emerim, which were on this side of the Yardin toward the sun rising, from Error, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Kermon, and all the plain on this side of the Yardin, eastward, even unto the sea of the plain, under the springs of Pitgah. All right. Well, there we go, folks. Um, I think we got it. Yep. That would be the end of this chapter. That's a very important chapter. This is the first commands that we found inside of Deuteronomy. And um, they're very important commands because we are towards the end of the Torah, or at least at the final leg of the Torah. And um, it's something that they say, right? It, it's, it's like not, Moses' final words, right? If you can remember anything from me, uh, don't forget this stuff. Don't add to and don't, don't take away from it. And so, children. And, and, you know, people jump on me all the time because I am constantly going over the words of Paul. And Paul is adding to and taking away. And unless you are very firmly understanding in the Torah, you wouldn't know that. You would just think that some widow would need to be 60 years old and, and wash the feet of everybody out there before she could even be considered a widow. And that is not Torah. That is the laws of Paul, which I think would also be an, another great segment that we should go over one day. We'll just read all the letters of Paul and put down his laws versus the Torah, and then we'll actually see it, and then people can argue that. So, all right, I think that's it. Anyone else have anything? Uh, we will be live on tomorrow night when we're do through our English. We will be uh, uh, back tomorrow with a regular um, sermon. We do here. Yep. Lesson. It's not a sermon. It's just a lesson. We're just reading with y'all. So, yes, that is it. And so hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. And we are out trying to fix little baby cows and do things of that nature. So we are off to do that. And, again, thank you guys very much for praying for our cow. We do appreciate it. There is some... We think positive movement towards that. So thank you guys. Yah does answer prayers and hopefully he will continue to answer this as well. And if he doesn't, um, that's his priority and that's his prerogative. And he works great wonders in every way. And sometimes we have to get sad to whoever find happiness. And so that's just the way it is. All right, everybody. That's it. Much love. All right. Read your Bible. Shalom.